How's it going, eh? Welcome back to the Great North. Today is currently May 12th, 2024, Mother's Day weekend, and uh, we're going to be going over the lawn. I want to give you some updates about things that are going around, uh, as well as the next video coming out in a few days. We'll be giving you an explanation of the project that I'm currently working on in the side yard here. Project lawn is going to be starting next weekend, Victoria Day, May 24. So. Without further ado, let's take a look at the lawn. Let's talk about what I did last week and how things are going. All right, so here's the back lawn. Looking pretty good for May 12th, I gotta say. I keep thinking that the lawn's not doing that well, but when I look at it compared to the date, we're doing pretty good. So this back lawn's very thick. It's pretty much in its spring flush growth right now couple things I'm noticing do got a little bit of disease it's been raining non-stop here so the rain is just not slowing down whatsoever so because of that uh, I am seeing a little bit of disease pop up what I'm gonna do is this lawn too hasn't been fertilized in about a month and a bit so I'm gonna be hitting this lawn with a little bit of fertilizer to see if I can get it kick-started um, and then I am noticing a bit of weed pressure this year some more dandelions than usual but that comes from my neighbors over there uh, and then, you know, a couple here, dollar weed, a little bit of chickweed in and around, and then everybody's favorite, white clover. Um, but all in all, this lawn is looking really good. So as for watering over here, this is just on a regular spring watering cycle. It's only got one dose of fertilizer this spring. Um, and traffic wise, it hasn't been too bad. We did have to unfortunately cut down one of our big trees here uh, earlier in the year uh, because it has died, but we replaced it with a new one today. And we're going to keep working away at, uh, at growing that one to replace it. But traffic wise, this hasn't been too bad. Uh, it's been pretty good. Um, all in all, pretty happy with the way everything's looking back here. I think another dose of fertilizer, keep going with the watering. And then we're going to be switching it to liquid in the summer. And hopefully that should get everything looking really good. But I'm really happy with the way that we're set up going into the summer back here. Um, yeah, so let's talk about what I did last weekend. So for those of you who have been around the channel for a long time, you know that I'm a big proponent of fall renovation. Fall is the beginning of the lawn care season, and this is very true, and it's always good to do your renovations in the fall if possible. Unfortunately, this year, um, we had some renovations done in the front, landscaping done in the front. We weren't able to find an aerator, so I wasn't able to do a proper fall renovation last year. So what I did this year was I did a kind of spring renovation, but more aerating. So a big thing, that I struggle with in my lawn. I have very sandy soil, very loose soil. And because of the, uh, this soil, um, I suffer from over compaction. I do have a riding mower that I cut the back lawn with. About 50% of the time, I used to cut 100% with a riding mower until I bought the Time Master last year. Review coming on that very soon. But this over compaction, I, do, I started to notice was affecting the health and ability for my lawn to grow. The best way to deal with over compaction is either liquid or mechanical aeration. Mechanical aeration is the best solution. Liquid aeration helps and I've been doing that supplementary in the summertime and I find it has been helping with that compaction problem. So what I decided to do this spring to see if it would help was I did a mechanical core aeration last weekend and then I did some spot seeding of some thin areas that I was hoping to see last year that I didn't get to. So without further ado, let's show some clips from that and then we'll come back to how things are progressing. All right guys, so we're here doing some spring renovation, mechanical core aeration, and uh, we're pulling plugs here today. We did get quite a bit of rain last night and we run the irrigation system. So we're pulling about a two to three inch plug this is a good size plug. This is what you want to be seeing. Stuff like this means you know you're getting down in there. If you're seeing stuff like this, you either got major compaction issues or you're not getting a good enough plug. Your lawn's too dry to be aerating. Good plugs, making a good seed bed here. We're not doing a full overseed this spring, just to overseed on the thin areas, the side lawn, and some of the areas up there we'll be working on later today. A couple things. We're going to be showing you how to execute a turn um, and then once that's done you rented this aerator you paid whatever 100 bucks for four hours you're going to get your money's worth these cores about three inches apart 
But you might miss stuff while you're going up and down. Once you finish going up and down, you're gonna turn around, you're gonna go back and forth across the side of the back lawn. You rented the aerator, you're putting in the work, might as well get your full money's worth. Make sure that you get everything aerated the way you want it. So that's the plan here today. We got the aerator rented, and we're gonna poke as many cores as we possibly can. Shout out to Blake the Butch for coming out and, uh, and helping us out here. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We're gonna keep going, keep poking those cores. And uh, these cores are gonna allow lots of nutrients and water to get down into the lawn. So this is what we're talking about here. Both ways, double the cores, nice seed bed here, lots of holes, lots of area for water to get down into the soil there. Make sure too, if you're doing some sort of mechanical core aeration and you have in-ground system, it doesn't hurt to get a couple flags and mark them out. You never know. Sometimes you think you know where the head is and then you hit a head and that's a $20 mistake plus time to replace it. So make sure you mark out where your system is so you know where everything's located at. As you see, I've marked every head in my lawn here so we know where everything is. All right, so looking at those clips, as you can see, pretty straightforward, did core mechanical aeration, making that perfect seed bed. After that was done, I went ahead and just broadcast some seed. I did a full overseed on the front lawn just because of the thin areas we had from the renovation last year. But in the back lawn here, I just spot seeded a couple spots. And let's show you how those spots are going. So, first of all, a big thing, if you have a low cut turf that you're cutting with a real mower, removal of the cores is important. For me, removal of the cores is not that important. I have high cut turf. They're, I'm just gonna let them break down in the soil. So down here you can see that you still have some cores left over kicking around in here. But over the next couple mows and the next couple watering and rain cycles, these are gonna break down. As for those core, the holes that we poked, as you can see, there's still some down in there. Um, what these allow, the lawn to do especially in the spring you're trying to promote root growth to get a healthy lawn so you can make it through those hottest worst days of the summer so this core mechanical aeration in the spring has been proven um, that it helps drive deeper roots so that water is going to get deeper in the soil those roots are going to go deeper you're going to help drive deeper roots drive the roots to dig and look for nutrients and those deeper roots are going to help you with your drought tolerance in the summertime because those roots are deeper when that top crust starts to dry off your grass should hopefully last a little bit longer throughout that drought i'll be able to withstand the drought a little bit better so that's why we did the core mechanical aeration this spring help relieve the compaction I needed some nice seed bed for the couple areas I needed to overseed as well as I wanted to see how this works driving deep roots. Ideally, if I had an aerator, I would aerate twice a year, every year. This year, I think we will be aerating twice, once in the spring, once in the fall. And I wanna see how this works. If this really helps with my lawn going through the summer, then aerating twice a year will be something that I will be doing. So without further ado, let's take a look at the, some of the spots we seeded. All right, so long time viewers of the channel will know this area. These trees fill in about mid-July. Uh, as you can see, the buds are already coming in on them. And this area gets just gets heavy, dense shade, and we have a hard time growing grass here. So it normally fills in once the fertilizer comes down. Um, so I'm gonna be fertilizing this afternoon. We're supposed to get some rain the next couple days. This is actually seven days today. And since we seeded, we seeded with the GrowForge Elite Turfgrass Blend. And as you can see, we are starting to get some germination slowly. Um, I find that this GrowForge Blend comes in really thick and healthy, but it does take quite a while. I normally, I find you don't see a lot of germination till 14 days plus. Um, but that's when you start seeing it come in. And as soon as it comes in, it comes in strong and there's no problems after that. So that's what I find with this GrowForge blend. Um, so over there, just hoping to seed it 
thicken it up a little bit. Same thing with over here. This area is underneath the trees and we're just trying to fill it in. It tends to fill in in the spring and then get thinned out in the summer when the tree canopy gets so dense. Probably need to trim some of these branches back a little bit to open more sunlight in here. But as you can see in here as well, starting to see some germination of that grass seed in there. It will come slowly but surely. Again, once this gets hit with a good dose of fertilizer, this will stay healthy in here. And then the final area, as we all know, this area between me and my neighbors, again, same problem. Thin, thick shade canopy with these trees. But it, as you can see, it's already filling in with the fertilizer we did in the spring and the summer. So I just did an overseed here, see if we can get it to thicken up a little more. It will need to be seeded again in the fall. This shade canopy is just too dense to sustain turf grass under here, but it's something that we're trying to work at, keep as good looking as we can, and that's why we're overseeding those areas. Other than that, once we aerated, overseeded in the backyard, I've been keeping the seeded areas wet, so I have them on a watering cycle. Right now where I am, it's pretty cool. Uh, our daytime highs are hitting maybe 18, 19, 20 degrees, not really much humidity, which when the wind comes, it really hurts your evapotranspiration rate in your lawn. So I've been watering twice a day for 15 minutes at a time with each cycle of the zones I've, I've watered. So that's zone four, zone five over there, just watering those, running those cycles twice a day, once at noon and once at two. The morning dew helps keep the lawn you know, healthy and wet in the morning, but you just want to keep that seed bed nice and damp throughout the day. That's how you're going to get that proper germination. And then hitting it with the fertilizer today too will really help kickstart things and get stuff going. So now moving on to the side yard. This is the side yard. Um, this area I find has been getting a little thin over the years. A couple reasons for that. These trees were newly planted about four or five years ago, as well as those ones down there which has kind of hampered some of the sunlight and airflow this side yard used to get. Um, but all in all, not too bad. I do have some opportunistic weeds in here just because this area is looking a little thin. Um, we got some white clover mixed in and then everybody's favorite, dandelions. Dandelions, I'm just pulling as I pull them. Uh, the white clover, uh, we're gonna be doing some spraying soon to uh, tackle that problem but all in all the side yard is not looking too bad i've been alternating every two weeks we just did our first application of balance line over here um, and then we're going to be going a straight line to get the color out and going so every two weeks i try to fertilize with these areas with liquid from that cutoff point over there everything down here 100 percent liquid all year long over here this was a damaged area from when they redid these gardens when they had the landscaping crew come. I seeded this about two weeks prior to when I seeded everything else. Um, and as you can see, this is the Grow Forge Elite Grass Blend. It's coming in quite nicely. Um, I'll give it another week or so, and then it will be ready to be hit with uh, with the first mow and some more starter fertilizer. Throw that down and get this grass growing so we can get it blending in here. Again, I got more chickweed coming in here. Uh, I don't know why the chickweed's so bad this year, but it is. It has been insanely wet here. It rains two, three days a week, all the time. It's been hard to get mows in, so we've been working hard to try to get as many mows in as we can, but it has been very, very wet here. Yeah, so in the front lawn here, I didn't really have too much I was concerned about. As you can see, it looks really good, um, considering it was aerated about a week ago. A couple areas over here, as I'd mentioned before, this is kind of a battle scar every fall from the walnut tree right here. When the leaves come here, it only kills this area off. So as you can see, more chickweed coming in, but this area did get overseeded. And we are seeing some germination there coming in. Uh, hoping to fill that in with a little bit of seed. Up here, for those of you around last year, know that there was a, I had a disease problem in through here just because of lack of airflow again with those trees. As you can see, some opportunistic chickweed here decided to come in and, and make some room. So mainly I was trying to just overseed fill in this area uh, to stop those opportunistic weeds from coming back. Um, as you can see as well, there was some damage here from the landscapers last fall. So we're working to fill those areas in, which again has caused some more opportunistic weeds to work their way in here. 
that's why this front lawn's a little weedy but a good spray next time i uh spray liquid fertilizer i'm just going to spike the mix with a little bit of fiesta and that should help take care of any of the broadleaf stuff we got it going on in here um, but all in all the front lawn has gotten three applications of liquid fertilizer now so you got your two applications of tpa uh starter or tnt starter tpa as well as organo hume and now you're looking at the first application of balance line which is done uh, this week and then we're going to be moving into straight line next week um, and then just keep alternating those as well as organo hume tpa on top of it trying to keep everything uh, nice and healthy in here but again this has been on an everyday watering cycle trying to get get that seed to start germinating um, but again haven't been having to water too much because of the amount of rain we've been getting but this front lawn looks really good same thing here just left the cores to sit on the lawn as you can see these ones are a little drier definitely need to water up here but we got those nice holes we're trying to punch definitely i did notice as soon as we did that core aeration, the lawn became thicker, healthier, and happier. Um, the weeds did too, but it definitely helped open up the lawn, bring in more nutrients, and bring in more health into the lawn that way. So for those of you who suffer from compaction or have an extra lawn that you're really struggling with this spring, maybe think about trying some core aeration. Just do some core aeration, fertilizer, and then if you really want to overseed those little bare spots, um, another one I had over here, it was actually from when they took down the tree when they took down the tree here they dropped the trunk on the lawn and it was a big tree so as you can see over here i had a big divot here i had to fill in with some dirt and some seed we're gonna hopefully be filling that area in um but yeah some little bit of mechanical coeration a little bit of granular fertilizer and you know a little bit of seed if you got some really thin areas is not going to hurt in the spring and you know obviously as i said fall would be the best time to do this but if you're looking you got a wedding plan you got someone coming up that you really want to get that lawn looking good for this is a good opportunity to do it now before temps get too hot we probably got another month maybe of good temps before stuff's going to start getting really hot really humid and the grass season's sad grass seed growing season is going to be end and you're going to be hitting in that struggle trying to keep the lawn green so that's something that is really important um and that, to do and uh, keep on top of so if that's something you're looking at doing that's what i would suggest and as you can see behind me here too in the side lawn this area is cut nice but this area is scalped down wonder what the reason behind that is stay tuned Coming up in the next couple days, I'm going to be announcing the side lawn project over here and what's going on. So, in the Great Green North, my name is Wade Murray. As always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any more lawn care questions, leave them in the comments down below. Send me an email, greatgreennorthlawncare at gmail.com or check out my website, greatgreennorthlawncare.ca. You can submit questions over there as well. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share the channel with your friends and family. We had a great influx of people in the spring. We're trying to keep the channel growing. Make sure we can provide more great products, great lawn tips for everybody around here as well. And if you're looking to get the Grow Forge liquid fertilizer projects that I talk about, as well as their Grow Forge Elite grass seed and different mono stand seed blends they have, you can check them out in the description and use code GGN23 to get 5% off your purchase and support the channel at the same time. In the Great Green North, my name is Wood Murray. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, keep it green.